Hello, you've arrived at Two Day Rentals. Today we are talking about the DC Multiverse action figure line from McFarlane Toys. Now, I'm new to this toy line, I will admit. However, I am not new at collecting McFarlane Toys. I've been collecting those for a while. If you are new to this channel, then I highly recommend that you check out some of my other videos. I do all sorts of stuff on this channel. If it has to do with movie merchandise, movie collectibles, video games, video game collectibles from yesterday, tomorrow, or today, there's a good chance I'll be talking about it. If you've been hanging out here for a bit and you enjoy what you're watching, please like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button. You'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing here and it will most certainly help me to continue to create content and we can grow two day rentals into something very special. And like I said, today we're talking McFarlane Toys, the DC Multiverse line with a specific focus on the new Batman figures for the new film. Now, for those who may not know, Todd McFarlane is a Canadian comic book artist, filmmaker, entrepreneur. He's best known for his work on Spider-Man and the creation of Spawn. As a matter of fact, some of his first sketches of Spawn were done in high school in a notebook, which is what you see pictured here. So early in his career, he got a chance to work with DC and Marvel. That in itself is pretty cool, but that's really just the tip of the iceberg. See, McFarlane was increasingly frustrated with the lack of creative control that he would have over his comic book characters and his creations. So he set out to create his own comic book company, Image Comics. In 1992, May of 1992 to be exact, the first issue of Spawn was released and it went on to sell over 1 million copies, becoming the best-selling independent comic of all time and still to this date. And following the continued success of Spawn, uh, McFarlane was approached by many, many different licensing opportunities, movies, video games, toys, 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 toys. And he was definitely excited about the idea of making toys that represented all of his comic book characters but he was a little disappointed that these toy companies weren't going to let him have the creative control like he wanted to so he got forced to well just start his own toy company and in 1994 mcfarland toys was founded by 2002 they had plenty of licenses under their belt akira metal gear clive barker the beatles rob zombie army of darkness some heavy heavy hitters and really, McFarlane Toys hasn't looked back since. One of these days, I definitely love to do a retrospective over Todd McFarlane, his career, his influence in the toy industry. I mean, I will quote McFarlane himself by saying, the ability to deliver a good product is my greatest strength. I'd like to be remembered as a guy who turned out some quality comics and toys while doing a few different things, even if it wasn't the easiest road to follow. And he's certainly done that. He definitely wanted to create intricate, accurate, highly articulated figures at a reasonable price. And that's exactly what these DC multiverse figures are. In January 2020, the first wave of the McFarlane Toys DC multiverse figures were released. And it contained all your usual suspects from DC, Superman, Batman, Harlequin, those. Now the fans, I believe, were a little sort of let down. They wanted that special McFarlane touch, and I think they also wanted him to dig a little bit deeper into the DC Multiverse back catalog of characters. Fast forward two years later, he's most definitely done that. And this line has really gone on to become a huge success. As a matter of fact, uh, just a few days ago, McFarlane posted a video of himself the numbers are in, and 2021 was a great year for McFarlane Toys. They were the number one selling action figure in Canada and North America, and I can definitely see why. As I started to see these figures hit the store shelves, I was not necessarily reluctant at first. I know McFarlane was going to produce quality, but I was just trying to find my way in. Where did I want to jumpstart my journey into the DC Multiverse figure line? When I found out he was going to be doing figures for the new Batman movie, I was in. I'm super stoked about this film. I think it's gonna be great for the Batman franchise. And well, we've got some really awesome figures to go along with it. So why not waste any more time? Let's take a look at these figures themselves. Now, just like we've come to expect from McFarlane figures, 
high quality at a reasonable price. These figures are extremely detailed, highly articulated, and man, I tell you, they're made for someone just like me. I love to get my hands in on these figures, pose them all different ways, set them up, knock them down, take different shots of them, take them outside, but they also look great displayed on your shelves. They look great posed in any number of ways that you want, and I will say that's where I think the sweet spot of this toy line is. Don't get me wrong, I love me some NECA figures. I have several in my collection, but there are a few things that I've observed over NECA figures over the years. The quality of the build of those figures isn't always great. As a matter of fact, there have been plenty of times as soon as I've taken a NECA figure out of the box, something has broken or chipped or something's happened to it. These figures seem to just burst out of the package they're ready for you to handle, ready for you to get your hands on. And these figures are just ready to be played with. I will say NECA may have a leg up as far as accessories for the figures. I mean, if you look at NECA figures, they come chock full of accessories and a lot of really quirky kind of accessories too. So it's really cool. You can set up a really nice scene with those figures. The McFarlane DC Multiverse toys don't really have as much as far as accessories are concerned, but they're around a seven inch scale and you can definitely find accessories to go along with it. Now I know that's kind of a pain, but at the end of the day, it's not a huge deal breaker for me. I don't necessarily, I don't buy figures for the accessories necessarily. Now, if I'm out at a Target or Walmart, I always go to the toy section. Even if I don't go there specifically looking for toys, I make a point to swing through there and see what they got. And when I saw the new Batman figures on the store shelves already, I said, okay, I'm going to make it a little game of mine to try to find this entire first wave out there on the stores and not pre-order any of this stuff. They kind of took me by surprise, honestly. My head's always on a swivel if I'm at a flea market or an antique store or something like that for retro things. Always, always, always looking for that stuff. But as far as new things are concerned, I'm just as guilty as we all probably are. It's like, oh, that looks cool. I'm gonna pre-order that one. Forget about it, and some months later, it shows up at your doorstep. And if you're like me, you definitely do kind of forget about it. You're like, oh yeah, I ordered that like six months ago. I didn't want that to be the case with these. I wanted to go out and see if I could find these one by one on the store shelves. And I pretty much found all the first wave, I do believe. Now, there are some variants, and I haven't decided if I'm gonna pick those up. I mean, really the ones that I wanted to get, I got. We'll just have to wait and see what other things they release as far as the new Batman movie's concerned. If you look at the back catalog of DC Multiverse characters, oh boy, there are some cool ones. I will definitely be on the lookout for those, and I will definitely be paying attention to this line moving forward. These figures start off at $19.99, and I found actually several of these on sale for a bit cheaper than that. And I just think for that price point, you can't beat that. I mean, NECA figures typically start off $29, $39, sometimes higher. These are about almost half that amount. I mean, they even have vehicles for these lines. As a matter of fact, there's a huge, like, monster truck, like, Bat Crusher or something along those lines that's out there that these figures actually fit in. And I've only ever seen one of those out on the store shelves. It was a bit pricey, not really in my wheelhouse is something I would collect, but it's definitely neat. There is his motorcycle that's coming out. I'm not sure if it's hit the store shelves or not. I've sort of got conflicting stories on that. That one I did pre-order just because I really wanted to make sure that I did get that one. Word around the campfires, that one's gonna be very hard to come by, so I suggest if that's something you are interested in, several places you can still get pre-orders on Bruce Wayne's motorcycle. Now, I was able to find the Bat Cycle on the store shelves, and it's super neat. There are a few, I guess, takeaways that are my favorites. Uh, the Bruce Wayne Drifter figure, I just thought was super duper cool. And also the Riddler. I just love the direction they've taken the Riddler in this film. I was a huge fan of what Jim Carrey did in Batman Forever, and I thought that was a great performance on his part. This is just something a little bit different, and the overall feel of this movie just seems a bit darker. The uh, inspiration for the Riddler was the Zodiac Killer, which now I've definitely just got my interest way, way peaked off the charts. So yeah, I would say that those two are my favorite of this line. I've said this before, and I'll go ahead and say it again. I think Robert Pattinson makes a fantastic Batman. He looks great in the cowl. 
I like the look of his armor. Uh, again, has nothing to do with McFarlane. I want to make that clear. I'm not judging these based on what McFarlane has done for the design because he has nothing to do with it. I just like what he's done to represent the design. McFarlane is definitely delivering on two things. The quality of figure, the build, the articulation, and the price point. And I'm pretty sure that that lineage carries on over to the figures that have been previous release, and I just can't wait to see what they do into perpetuity with this line. Uh, but yeah, I highly, highly recommend it. If you're wanting to know whether I recommend that you jump out and get these figures, I guess it just depends on a few things. Are you a fan of Batman? Are you looking to collect start collecting for uh, a new line of figures? I don't really know. I was kind of somewhere in between. I wasn't really looking to collect for a new line of figures, but these were just too cool. It was one thing I just couldn't pass I'll be up. very curious to see what all of you lovely viewers out there think of this particular toy line and McFarlane's representation of the characters from the new Batman movie. Have you already started collecting for this DC multiverse line? Were you in from the get-go back in 2020? I would love to hear. Drop me a comment down below. Or do you plan on picking up some of these? Uh, I would love to know what your thoughts are. Also, are you excited about the new movie? Obviously, we are here at Two Day Rentals. Thank you so very much for stopping down here, spending a little bit of time with me. Uh, talking about my introduction to the DC Multiverse figure line by McFarlane Toys. I'm so glad that I got in on this one finally. I was a little hesitant at first. I just wanted to see what direction he went with these figures. And boy, it just seems like the man has the Midas touch. Thank you very much, and we will see you again here next time.